Hello, Persistent Python programmers. It's Prof G, and in this lesson, we are going to be covering plotting in Moo in CircuitPython. And we're going to use the accelerometer, which can sense motion and orientation along three different axes. So let's learn big. So Moo has a plotter built into it. Just look for the plotter icon in the toolbar at the top of Moo, and the plotter can plot anything which is a tuple or tuple. Remember, we covered tuples in an earlier video. Tuples are values that are enclosed in parentheses with commas separating the elements. Color is a tuple with three elements from 0 to 255. Here is a two-value tuple. You can even have a tuple with a single element. Just make sure that you have a comma after that one element and before the closing parentheses. You have to have the trailing comma for a single element tuple in Python. It's weird, but that's just the quirky Python standard for single value tuples. Now, fortunately, we're going to be able to grab values from the three different axes for accelerometer output, put these in a tuple, and use the ultra groovy plotter to plot out values from each of these three axes as we move our CPB around. So, to quote Montel Jordan, this is how we do it. Now, the accelerometer on the CPB is a common accelerometer called the LIS3DH. And that's not a very friendly name, but if you happen to see this name in code, it's referring to this particular and very popular standard low-cost, low-power accelerometer. Now, this accelerometer reports motion and orientation along three axes. So you can see in this diagram, the x-axis points left and right, y points front and back, and the z is meant to be sort of through the ceiling and through the floor. That's your vertical axis. Now this is how we set up our code. First, as we've done in other examples, we need to tell Python, hey, we need a library to work with the accelerometer. Now base Python doesn't know about accelerometers, but we'll just import the Adafruit underscore LIS3DH library, and that'll give us all of the data structures and methods we need to work with this particular accelerometer sensor. Now we're also gonna to need to import bus IO. We've never done that before, but that's just a library that's going to allow us to set up communication with our accelerometer so we can refer to it in our code. Now these four lines of code are the code that we need to set up and configure the accelerometer on a circuit playground, either Bluefruit or Express. And just like our previous setup code, if you consider this like a software Lego, you can just reuse these four lines whenever you need to work with the accelerometer on a circuit playground. But just so you know what things are doing, I'll describe the four lines briefly. Now this first line refers to I2C, which is often pronounced as I squared C. That's the inter-integrated circuit protocol. We'll cover more of this in a future lecture, but for now know that I squared C is a way to connect multiple devices like a bunch of sensors or motors to the same pads or pins on your board hardware you just daisy chain them together. So I squared C is a method for communication for multiple devices, but it only requires two additional wires other than power and ground. And you can continue to daisy chain a bunch of devices off of those two pins. Now you'll eventually hear about boards using a standard like Stemma QT or quick cable connectors. Those all use I squared C. Now to get I squared C set up for the accelerometer that's built into our device, not connected via a wire connection, we're gonna use this line. I2C equals bus IO dot I2C, that's an uppercase, and then in parentheses board dot in all uppercase accelerometer underscore SCL, comma, board dot in an all uppercase accelerometer underscore SDA. Now SCL and SDA actually represent the two wires in I squared C. SCL is the clock wire to synchronize multiple devices that send signals over the same wires. And SDA is the data line that sends signals from our circuit Python code. You can think of this like the signal wire that we use when we're connecting to external NeoPixel devices. Now in this next line here, in the way that we configured a digital in out object for buttons or touchpads, we do the same here, but we're gonna pass in board dot and then in all uppercase, accelerometer underscore interrupt, and that's all inside of parentheses. Again, that board statement knows exactly where our accelerometer hardware is and how it needs to be set up when creating a digital in-out object. Then we'll create an accelerometer object using the Adafruit underscore LISDH library. So we use this line here, accelerometer equals Adafruit underscore LIS3DH dot, and then in all caps, LIS3DH underscore I squared C. And in parentheses, we're gonna pass in I squared C comma, and then address equals zero, lowercase x19, and then comma, INT1 equals INT1. Not a very friendly line, but you use this whenever you need to create an LIS3DH accelerometer object on a circuit playground. Now, once we do that, we refer to the variable accelerometer whenever we want to work with the accelerometer in our code. So in the next line, we use the accelerometer's dot range property to set up a range for the accelerometer. We can set the range to be any of four values, range underscore two underscore G, 
or 4G, 8G, or 16G. Now these are multiples of the G-force, which is a type of force we usually talk about when we are detecting orientation and motion. We'll talk more about this in just a bit. Usually the range won't matter in most of your applications, but just in case you're really throwing around or shaking up your CPB, you'll want to set this to a higher range. So we'll set ours to range underscore eight underscore G. Feel free to experiment with this value later on if you want to see how this limits or expands the values the accelerometer will return. Now just a quick aside to file away for a time when you might use a different board that doesn't have a built-in accelerometer, but you're looking to hook up one externally. Now the CircuitPython code that uses the internal accelerometer on the Circuit Playground that we have here is a bit different than if we had an external accelerometer. That's because the engineering used to squeeze an accelerometer into the Circuit Playground is a bit different than if we had an accelerometer sensor wired externally. So just to show you what that might look like and how it would be coded, here's an Adafruit Cutie Pie, QT, because it has a Stemma QT I squared C port and Pi because it runs Python. It's super tiny. When it first came out, it was only five bucks. At the time I'm recording this video, it's 750, but it lacks the built in sensors of the CPB. It doesn't have Bluetooth. It has a very small memory, but you can add an external accelerometer. Now I've got one type here. It costs less than five bucks. It's an LIS 3DH sensor module, just like the one built into the CPB. It's plugged in via a Stemma QT cable, and the QT Pi, as we said, has a Stemma QT I squared C port. So for about 12 bucks total, this setup here will read in 3-axis accelerometer input. And the code you need to use for hardware like this is here. You don't use bus IO the way that we did previously. You just set up board.i squared C with empty open and close parens. This gets the default I squared C location where you're likely to wire the sensor to your board or where it'll find the Stemma QT port like the one built into the Cutie Pie. And also when setting up your digital in out object, instead of using Circuit Playground's built-in board.accelerometer underscore interrupt, you'll pass in any valid digital pin. In most cases, you can use something like board.d6, which I've used here. And another thing, you won't need this address argument when creating the accelerometer, so you leave that out. Now, if you work with other boards in the future and you want to use an external LIS3DH, this is your code. And you'll also find information about this online if you search for the Adafruit Learn Guide for LIS3DH. Now back to what we want to do, which is get our three axis accelerometer readings. Now in our while true loop, we're simply going to refer to the accelerometer object that we created up here, and we're going to refer to that object's dot acceleration property, and that's actually going to give us a tuple containing three values for the X, Y, and Z orientations. And if you add separate values to the left side of the equal sign, that's going to extract these three separate elements of the tuple and put them in three separate variables. So I've done this just to make it easier to see those three separate values, and we're going to print these out below. But notice how I print them. I also put these within an extra set of parentheses, so I turn them back into a tuple. Why do I do that? Well, once values are printed as a tuple, I can also open up the built-in plotter in Moo, which automatically plots any tuple that's printed out. So that's going to show us three lines, one for each of the different axes in the tuple, and we're going to be able to see changes in the accelerometer plotted in real time as we move our CPB. And that'll be cool. Now the time sleep down here just means wait one tenth of a second. That gives us a very slight pause in between each reading of the accelerometer so that things are a little bit easier to see on screen. And now you might be wondering when you see the output, what are these numbers? Well, acceleration is measured by most accelerometers in meters per second squared. Now, you might have heard the term G-force before. My students sometimes refer to themselves as being in Prof G's G-force. But from a physics perspective, G-force is the Earth's gravitational pull at sea level. And that's about 9.3 meters per second. So if you've got your Circuit Playground Bluefruit on its back, you should probably see the Z-axis printing out values that are around 9-ish meters per second squared. Now that'll change slightly with each call, even if you're not moving your device, there's always a little bit of variation that occurs when sensors read data. But now that we have our code and we understand how it works, let's enter this together and compare the output when we use Moo's plotter and move our CPB. Now this example doesn't use touch IO. It doesn't hurt to leave it in there, but I'm gonna delete it so that my code's not crowded. So first let's import two libraries that we need. That's import Adafruit underscore LIS3DH 
and import bus io all one word and now our code is getting kind of crowded here so hopefully you've been saving example code to your circuit python school folder so that you can raid that code when you need any of the examples that we previously used so to keep things cleaner i'm going to delete all of this extra code that i don't need from my accelerometer example i'm going to cut out everything here after import bus io and before the while true loop and in between here, I'm going to enter the four lines that I need to use whenever I want to set up the accelerometer that's built into the Circuit Playground Bluefruit or Express devices. Now I'm going to create an I square C object. A good name for that is I2C, so that's what I'm going to call it. And I'll set that equal to bus IO, that new library we imported, dot, and in capital letters, I2C for I squared C. And then in between parentheses, we pass in two parameters, board dot, and in all caps, accelerometer underscore SCL, comma, and then board dot, all caps, accelerometer underscore SDA. I squared C needs a clock and a data line, and since I'm using I squared C to communicate with the built-in sensor instead of one that's connected via the board standard external I squared C connection, I just enter where I can find the clock and data connection for the built-in accelerometer. And if you didn't understand that, just remember this is one of the four lines that you need whenever setting up the internal accelerometer that's built into the circuit playgrounds. Now I'm also going to create a digital in out object. We've done this previously. To keep things the same as some of Adafruit's examples, I'm going to call this int1. That's also the name of an argument that we'll pass in in the line below. I'll set that equal to digital io dot digital in out moo. Code completion should show that if you type in capital D. And then in parentheses, I'm going to pass in board dot accelerometer underscore interrupt. And that's in all caps. Now in the next line, I'm going to create my accelerometer object. I'll give that the name accelerometer, and I'll set that equal to Adafruit underscore LIS3DH. That's the library that we imported above, dot, and then in all caps, LIS3DH underscore I squared C. That's because we're creating an LIS3DH I squared C object. And we pass in three values in parentheses, I squared C, which is the digital in out object that we created above, we also have to put in comma address equals, and this is a zero, not the letter O, lowercase x 19. That's the address where the accelerometer can be found on our board. Normally we don't have to add an address, but the built-in accelerometer has a different address than if it were plugged in externally. And then we say comma int1 equals int1. And then we'll set the accelerometer's range with accelerometer.range. We'll set that equal to Adafruit underscore LIS3DH dot, and I'll set that to capital range underscore eight underscore capital G. Then I'm going to delete everything in my while true loop and I'm going to simply enter everything that I need to get the accelerometer values and print and plot them. So I'm going to set X comma Y comma Z as three variables that are equal to the accelerometer objects dot acceleration property dot acceleration returns a tuple but I extract these into X Y and Z so they're easier to see. And then the next line, I'm going to print out those values as print, open parenthesis, but I'm going to open another parenthesis, then type in x comma y comma z and close with two parentheses. I put these back in a tuple, and the reason that I put them back in the tuple is when I print the tuple, the plotter in Moo can pick up any of the separate values that are part of the tuple and print them as separate lines. Now I'll slow down the output with a time.sleep and pass in 0 0.1. Let's open the serial monitor and press save. And look at this, we're seeing three values for the X, Y, and Z axis. You can give yourself more room by dragging the line between the serial monitor and your code. And I'm also going to click on plotter so we can see, hey, look at that, three lines for the plotter. Just make it a little bit bigger so you can see the plot lines in here. Let's concentrate on that leftmost value that's reading about zero when it's flat. But if I lift up the right side, the X axis will start to increase until it's at about a 90 degree angle. That's nine and change. That's about one G. If I bring it flat and then lift up the left hand side, we'll see that becomes a negative G or negative nine in change. Then I put it flat, it's back down to zero again. So that was the right and left orientation. What happens if I take the top part where the USB connection is and lift that up? Well, that's the Y axis orientation front to back. We see this center value goes up to about nine and change. That's a G. And if we put it back flat, it's about zero. But if I lift it up in the other direction so that the USB connection is pointing downward, I get a negative G or negative nine and change. Then I'll lay this down flat again. So that was the Y axis or the front to back orientation. We saw how those values changed. And now in terms of the values that are printing out, let's look at the rightmost value. So that's the Z axis. And we can see that that's about a G or nine and change when it's laying flat on the table. But if I flip it over, we can see that I get a negative G there showing that I'm holding the device upside down. So that's the Z axis, the vertical axis, the floor to ceiling axis. Excellent.
Now I want to show you one more thing too. If I shake my device really rapidly, just give it a good shake, shake it up again. You can see that the three lines are spiking up and down much more than a G. That's because the shake value in different directions is generating more than one times the Earth gravitational pull. So we're seeing how the accelerometer can be used to show motion, how it can be used to show orientation. We showed the plotter in Moo. Hope you're feeling good about these skills. And now you can start thinking about how you can apply the different things that you've learned. So can you use accelerometer readings to turn on different LED lights? Can you use motion to trigger a certain sound? And you can start brainstorming because you're already armed with enough skills that you can begin to make your own projects. Keep at it, Coder, because there's lots more goodness to come.